All right, everyone, my name is Moester, and welcome back to the continuation of our Pedestals 0.8S update videos. Um, so now we are going to jump into the filters themselves. Last uh, little clip, we talked about hot swap uh, pedestal uh, tools. You can hot swap them to the different tools. Uh, we talked about how interaction changed with pedestals. Uh, we talked about the 11 new types, but we didn't actually say what they were for filters. Uh, we talked about deprecation of upgrades, so please, 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 please update those. And we also talked about um, how you insert some of your augments and 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 stuff. So um, now let's actually talk about the core content of what the mod update is about, and that is filters. We have a whole bunch of filters, um, and these can be inserted into, into any pedestal uh, to start off with, and also some uh, upgrades have special effects. Uh, when combined with a pedestal uh, filter, uh, the block breaker, for example, can now break blocks based on what the filter has uh, for it. So if you want to make a very simple uh, Batania living wood, living rock setup with two block breakers uh, filtered for living rock and living wood, uh, you can now. So that's that's kind of a nice handy little thing you can do. Um, the, the harvester, if it has the magnet enchant on it, uh, it can suck up various crops that are specified. Um, the tree choppers can chop wood and leaves based on what the filter says. Um, uh, the quarry is, is still the quarry. The filter just got put into as a normal filter instead of the chest below it. Um, yeah, just a whole lot of uh, updated machine-related things. Um, mainly, just keep in mind, if you're wondering, does this machine have... Um, kind of special content it will say filterable um the harvester filterable um i'm trying to think here this guy not filterable doesn't have a, a jai description that might be a bug um this guy says uh, filterable magnetic so it has the ability to have the magnetic enchant and the magnet is also filterable uh this guy not filterable. So um, this uh, this guy still respects its entity filters, uh, but it doesn't have any you know filter related bonus, if you will. So uh, that's how you can kind of tell from JEI if an upgrade can have special bonuses with filters. Um, all right, so that's kind of the first thing with the filters. The next thing with the filters is let's actually talk about the filters, how to set them up, uh, kind of how they work, and uh, yeah, let's kind of go from there. So. Uh, to start off with, you need to make yourself an upgrade tool. You need to swap your upgrade tool to the filter swapper, and then you need to use that to make upgrade or filter bases, basically. These guys are used to make all the different filters, as well as the uh, smart upgrades. These used to be called the filtered ender or filtered importer or filtered export, you know, filtered whatever. Uh, but now they're called smart because uh, really they are smart enough to know can they send items or can they not send items. So uh, the smart uh, ender ex export, the smart import upgrade, uh, the smart restock upgrades, um, they've just got renamed a little bit. The fluid smart import, um, the smart restock, yeah, so there you go. Uh, and that's all the other recipes as well. A lot of the filter upgrades just got changed to a filter base with, you know, whatever material it was, so iron bars for the item stack. Um, a, a wood pickaxe for the durability, the tag tool for the filter tag type, um, wool and book for the enchanted fuzzy, uh, glass for the mod filter, a book for the is enchanted filter, um, iron and more iron for the restricted filter, um, uh, book and redstone for the enchanted count filter, um, the filter, or the, you know, the, the smart fluid import, uh, book and iron bars for the exact enchantment one, uh, wool for the um, just the regular item filter, and bread for the is food filter. So uh, that's kind of the different rundown of the recipes. Of course, these are all in JEI, and they all have various uh, descriptions. So if you're wondering what this one does, if you can't remember, uh, the the base item filter um, used to craft other filters. So that's pretty easy. Uh, the item filter here has its own stuff. Uh, compares incoming items to those in the inventory below. Only allows matching items to pass through the pedestal. Uh, this does not care about NBT or or uh, durability. 
uh, whereas this one does. So it does it does matching item stacks uh, can pass, and item stacks means NBT has to match or durability has to match, something like that. Um, the food one only accepts items that are food to pass through the pestle. So stuff like that. You can find all those tool tips in JEI. Um, I know a lot of people forget JEI has these information tabs, uh, but most every upgrade except for, I think, one in pedestals has that tab. Uh, for whatever reason, this one is bugged. I don't know why. I'll have to look into it. Uh, but all the other ones have that nice informational tab. And they're relatively updated uh, with brief descriptions of kind of how they work. Um, so, yeah. Make sure you look at those if you're having any questions. Um, and then I'm also hanging out in the All the Mod 6 Discord and the Agnomatica 6 Discord, as well as our own Discord. So if you want to, uh, if you need help, you can ping me in any of those locations. And I should be able to come running uh, to help you out, unless I'm sleeping for some reason. So, uh, yeah, that's just kind of a quick rundown of the filters. I guess we will go into a more detailed explanation now of how they work. So, uh, to start off with your filter base, uh, kind of your first thing to kind of really craft. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if you want to switch to a blacklist option, uh, similar to the hot swap tool feature, you can hot swap your filter from whitelist to blacklist. Uh, I think one, the durability filter uh, swaps from above durability percentage or below durability percentage. Um, so there's some hot swap options there. The two filters that you can't hot swap uh, to blacklist, whitelist, are the filter enchanted count. Uh, this has a purple border, so you cannot change the border to black or white. It doesn't have that option. Uh, and same thing with the restricted filter. It's green, uh, so you cannot go black or white. Uh, filter type is just the one uh, type, uh, so it doesn't hot swap like that. Uh, all the other ones can be either whitelist or blacklist. The default to whitelist, uh, but you can just hot swap them for blacklist if you need. So that's pretty easy to do. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll start talking about how the different filters work. Um, I've used most of them on the test server already, um, just because they're very useful for all sorts of things. Um, so I, I just now uh, turned off my sorting system. Um, so how the sorting system works is we're using a smart importer on a, a barrel or some input chest of some sort. Uh, and then this is actually linked up to all these different pedestals, so all of those, and to this one, which is filtered uh, to link to all of these. So um, you can get kind of crazy with the filtering system now, which is awesome. And, uh, and yeah, it's quite nice. So, uh, bum, 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 bum. What are we talking about? Yes, more filter stuff. Okay, so let's start off with the item type filter. Uh, let me see. I'm looking at where at this one right here. Boom. Let's pull that out real quick. I did not mean to break that. I forgot. Uh, if you're in creative mode, uh, testing, the left click interaction to remove items doesn't work. You break things. So be careful. Um, swap to game mode creative. You can hot swap with F3, F4 to swap back and forth between modes and then you won't break stuff anymore. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, let's throw our upgrade back on there. Oop, so um, I added a new feature. Okay, that's still connected. Good. All right, so the item filter updates. Um, how this works, let's actually clear this item filter here. You can clear any of the filters by just uh, crafting it in your grid. Uh, the base filter, obviously, you can't. Although, maybe I should make it do that, too, because that's kind of annoying me now. All right. More updates. Yay! Uh, anywho, the filter item, well, again, you can craft it to uh, clear it out. But how this one works is all filters. Uh, you set up an inventory that has the items you want to filter by. So this is the PAMS tools. And we want to set up this filter. We crouch right click on the inventory. And the filter will now remember what was in the inventory. So you can see it says juicer, saucepan, and cutting board to filter by. Uh, right now this is a whitelist. We can blacklist them so they don't go in that inventory or whitelist them so they do. Um, because how pedestals work, pedestals and their upgrades are kind of separate entities. Um, they all work independently of each other. So the pedestal transfers items, the upgrade manipulates the items in the pedestal and puts it into a chest or out of a chest. And why this works out so well is we don't need filtered exports anymore. We just throw a filter on the pedestal 
Now the pedestal can only receive those items. It cannot receive any other items but the items specified. And the export upgrade just goes, I know what I'm doing because I just pull items from the pedestal and put them in a chest. And the export upgrade didn't have to change. So the pedestal now is restricted to only have whatever is filtered and the export continues to do its job like it always has. So uh, that is kind of the reason why there is different ways to upgrade a upgrade versus different ways to upgrade your pedestal. Um, that's why the two systems are kind of split because pedestals do their own thing and upgrades do their own thing. Um, but yeah, so that is how you set up the item filter. The item stack filter is very much the same, except item filter doesn't care about durability, NBT, or enchantments on an item. If a pickaxe with enchantments and a pickaxe without enchantments uh, come up to the filter, it will both accept them with the regular item stack one or with the regular item one, excuse me, because it's kind of like a fuzzy filter. It says, oh, you're a pickaxe? Sure, why not? Come here. Um, whereas the item stack one, if you have a enchanted pickaxe and a non-enchanted pickaxe, it will only allow the one that matches the filter. So if it's the non-enchanted one, only that one can come through if it's at the same durability as the, as the one being filtered for. Um, so the item stack one is very specific. Uh, it works really good with the magnet upgrade if you're doing, say, Applied Energy Sticks uh, Flux Crystal Growth. You can pull them out at the perfect moment with that item stack filter on a magnet. Uh, so that works out really, really well. But yeah, that is the item and item stack. Next up, we have the mod filter. Uh, this guy just filters items based on mod. So if we uh, throw this into our offhand and I come over here, and this is our... Uh, so how this is working is this is sending to this pedestal. This pedestal is looking for multiple different mods to filter by, and then each uh, uh, each chest here has their own mod content in it. So we have Batania in one, uh, we have that in another, and if you look at these, these are all mod filters as well, but for their one specific mod, Ars Nouveau, pedestals, you know, single single mod filters right there. Uh, whereas this one is a multi-mod filter, and the reason why I did it this way is a pedestal can only connect to eight different pedestals. You can only send items to eight pedestals. So um, I'm sending from this one to a kind of a relay, if you will. This one is looking for all the different categories that it sends items to. So I've just basically extended my sorting system to be able to cover 15 storage inventories instead of just eight. Um, so that's kind of uh, one way you can use filters in a storage system type setup. Uh, and this as well, uh, the way we set this up is I basically just took one of every item uh, in, you know, Batania, Thermal. Um, do note that the fruit and the crops are two different mods. Pam's has been split up into multi-mods, so this is actually two different mods here. Um, you know, pedestals, took an item from pedestals, put it all in a barrel. Uh, I actually put it in this one here. And then I shift right click on the barrel. I remembered what was inside with the filter. And the filter only looks at what the mod is. So uh, any mod related items that pass through will go into the pedestal with this filter. And then they will be transferred into their respective um, other ones. Why is it when it rains? It always rains when I'm recording. I don't understand. Okay, so. That's the mod filter. Pretty easy to use. Not too bad. Tag filter next. Yep, this one right here. Boom. Uh, the tag filter. How this works is you need to have the tag tool to craft it. So that and a filter base uh, to craft a tag tool or a tag filter. And how this one works is it's kind of unique. Um, instead of filtering based on items in an inventory, you have to rename items to forge tags. And how you know what these forge tags are is if you have the tag tool in your main hand, a item in your off hand, and right click, you'll notice that doesn't actually have any tags on it. If we put an upgrade in, uh, that one has Pedestals Upgrades and Piglin Loved on it, which means you can trade those with Piglins. Aha, kind of cool. You know, Piglin Currency. Uh, if I throw the linking tool in there, it tells us the linking tool. Those are all tags being listed in your chat there. And those are tags you can filter by. So if I had, you know, um, a diamond, for example, 
in my offhand. It gives us all the different tags, the last one there being forged gems. And so if we remember, okay, we have forged gems. We can rename an item in the anvil to have that name. So we have forging its dusts, gems, nuggets, coals, storage blocks, like redstone block, uh, clay. We can put all these renamed items in this inventory. And then with our filter, which I will clear just to you know show you that it actually works, uh, we can clear it. We can then shift right click on that barrel that has all those filter uh, n renamed items in it. And then you'll notice, hey, it's actually checking for forge gems, nuggets, coals, storage blocks, etc. And so, yeah, that's how you set that one up. It's a, it's a bit unique, but uh, that's how you set it up. And uh, the forge tag system can be really, really powerful for sorting uh, just because, I mean... Now, no matter what new ore we get, it can get processed and thrown directly into our storage. I don't have to set up another filter or modify a filter like I would have if I made a rolling pin from PAMS or, you know, pot. I'd have to update this filter every time I add a new tool. But once I add all the tools, I would never have to add, you know, update it again. So uh, that is the benefit of some of these is is once you've done it, it's a static, uh, it's set statically and uh, you no longer need to update the filter to you know, get your items sorted. So that's kind of nice. Um, the filter update really has just uh, made a lot of setups more refined and simpler to, to, to use. So that's kind of the huge, the huge main reason for the pedestal update is it just simplified a whole lot of things uh, that were filter related. So, all right, uh, next up we have the is food filter. I'm also using this one for food. This one's simple. Uh, there is uh, a blacklist and white list option, but there's no option to actually set up a filter. You can see it didn't actually like right click on the chest. Uh, there's no way you can actually set up a filter with this one. It's only checking for is it food or is it not food? Uh, food is constituted by can the player eat it or not? So yes, rotten flesh is food. If you want to sort rotten flesh out before, uh, you can do some pedestal linking priority stuff and sort the rotten flesh out to a, an inventory before it tries to send the food to this uh, pedestal. So you can do some pedestal um, priority linking, if you will, uh, to filter out rotten flesh before it goes to your food chest. Um, so that's the food filter, pretty easy to do. The is enchanted one works just like the food. It checks is the item enchanted or not, and then filters like that. Uh, the enchanted fuzzy one, if you put any enchanted item in an inventory and set the filter with that, uh, and then any item that's enchanted will try to go into this filter and only um, enchantments that were set up that match. So if you have like say a protection one enchantment set in the filter, but you have a protection three chest plate coming in, uh, because it's still protection, it'll allow it to pass through. Um, where that differs is if you have the enchant exact filter, uh, if you had that same scenario, protection one versus protection three, the protection three couldn't pass through because it doesn't match protection one. Uh, so that's the difference between the fuzzy and exact fuzzy lets any enchant of that type to pass through. Uh, exact requires the exact combination, um, to pass through. So, um, make sure you have the exact combination. Um, and only those can pass. The enchanted count filter, a bit unique with how you set this one up. You have to put um, different enchantments on items into a chest. Shift right click on the chest and it will add up the total number of different enchants um, or different items with different enchants. So if I say have a, a book with protection one, I have another book with protection one and a breaking one, and I have an, uh, a third book with like thorns. That enchantment counter counts the protection one on the one thing, the protection and the unbreaking as two on the next item, and the thorns on the last item as one. So one plus two plus one is four. So that would be how it sets up the count. And then when an item goes to pass through, if that item has four enchants on it, it'll pass through a filter that is a count of four. What this can be really helpful for is if you are disenchanting items uh, or ripping items off or ripping enchants off an item and you want to 
take it out of your disenchantment system when it has one enchant left on it, you can use this filter at a count of one to remove those items. So easy to use. Uh, the durability filter. I'll actually uh, demonstrate this one because we are using it. We're using it for all of my armor just goes straight into here. And it's it's quite, quite handy. Um, so how this works is, uh, um, you know, let me just do, let me just do this and that. Okay, so how this works. Uh, first of all, let's swap back to uh, default. Boom, like so. This is looking for a certain percentage of durability uh, above or below. Uh, currently, it's set to below. Uh, you can switch it to above uh, or below, above or below. Uh, I'm going to use below here just because we're so, we're so, we're searching for full durability and below. So any armor, tool, weapon will go in there. Uh, and how this one is set up is if I throw a fully repaired item in here, uh, it will automatically set the filter to 100% durability. And it will be checking for either above 100%, which is 100% and above. So if you are fully repairing items, you can set this up at 100% and above, and it'll pull it out at 100% or above, which you can't go above 100%, so don't worry about it. Um, the below option is if it's 100% or below, so uh, that's what we're using for our filter already. Uh, if I throw in, say, this pickaxe, 81 out of 131, Whatever the percentage of durability left is will be what it's set at, so 61%. Uh, but if we say that's 61% in our sword here is 54%, if we add those two percentages up, we'll get like 110% or something. 100, I don't know, some, some number. Well, if we try to filter off both of those, it'll actually add both of them up, and it'll be over 100%, so then it'll default to 100% durability. So uh, that's how you set that up. If you set up multiple tools in there, it can give you a total percentage of the two tools. Uh, but if you set it up where it's uh, just one tool and a certain durability, it can pull out at above or below that durability on that tool. Uh, so if, we, if you want to min-max some things with like recycling, you can do it that way. Uh, but yeah, so that is the durability filter and how it works. Uh, pretty nice, honestly, for doing stuff like this. Uh, last but not least, we have the restricted filter. Uh, I haven't actually crafted one of these in the pat and in the server yet, but I will just for demonstration purposes. Uh, we'll do that real quick. That and that. All right, how this guy works is very similar to the enchantment count filter. Uh, if we throw three items in here, shift right click, boom, count of three is what it's looking for. Uh, if we throw 64 and that, 64 is the max stack size, even though we have more items in here. So you can specify exactly how many items go into, uh, or are allowed to pass through the pedestal that has this filter on it. Uh, this filter is another one that you can't change mode. It is just one mode. And last but not least, I guess I'll show off how it works. Uh, so we're searching for an a, enchant or an account of one. We'll throw that in there. Uh, we'll hit up the, the tool. It says filter restricted count of one. All right, so how this works is if I put a full stack of diffusers in there, one will pass. No more will pass in. Uh, as you see, there's just one. Normally, a pedestal will send four at a time, but in this case, because we're restricted to one only, uh, until that item's removed, it will not send us any more items to that pedestal. So that is just something to keep in mind. Um, let's actually test this a little bit further. Let's say let's let's say we want three items to pass through. Okay. Oops. All right, so we're gonna allow three items to pass through our filter now. Three items, boom, go. All right, three items. Now if I take one item out, two items out, I've taken two items out now, uh, three items out, and now it sends over new ones. So if we look at it, that has three again, two, one and it sends new upgrades. So 
with the restricted upgrade, if it has less than three, it still won't allow you to send any until you have none in there, and then it'll send over a new batch. So that's how that one works. Uh, that can be really helpful for various automation setups. I think Blood Magic is, is the example that I would use it for probably. Um, that way you can automate a certain number of slates to get crafted uh, instead of the pedestal trying to send a full four or a full stack or whatever, you can hook up some redstone and, and kind of, uh, you know, restrict how many uh, actually get sent over. Oh, I did not add a recipe for that one. All right. Another bug. Yay. Uh, but yeah, that is the filter update and kind of how the filters work. I hope that helps. Uh, that was a kind of a longer video than I had hoped. Uh, but yeah, that's how that works. Uh, if you put a filter on a magnet, it'll actually filter the items it can suck up. If you put a filter on an item tank, um, the storage option. Uh, so items can only be sent to the pedestal if they match the filter. And if you drop items on the tank, if they don't match the filter, they won't go in. So uh, bonus there. The importer as well has that same feature. If you drop items on the importer and it doesn't match the filter, they won't get inserted. So that's kind of handy as well. And uh, yeah, that is how uh, the filters work on those upgrades. Um, the ender exports are the same way, so that sort of thing. Yeah, there you go. That is that. Oh, one other thing I did not mention yet. You can put filters on crushers and smelters. Um, and then that way, if you want to use one inventory as the inventory for your crusher and smelter, you can set up filters on those two. So the crusher might do forge ores, the smelter might do forge dusts. And then that way they never try to, the smelter will never try to just smelt ore and the crusher will never try to crush dust um, since it's already crushed. So that way you could stick both upgrades on a single input inventory and then go about it that way. Um, I'm still going to set mine up with two different inventories like so, uh, but you can filter them if you so choose, because uh, it does technically save you a little bit of gold resources in the early game. So, All right, that is the filter update and what you need to know to set up filters in your world. I hope that helps a lot. We will see you in the next episode. Uh, we'll be covering next up a lot more of the changes that has come to uh, kind of update changes. So like we have, um, you can actually toggle redstone now. Uh, redstone comparator stuff now has changed. You can toggle redstone um, or redstone mode, I should say. There's some new advanced features that have come out like the gentle harvest, which was not an April Fool's joke. Um, there's some advanced recipes for devs that can be added whole bunch of other stuff to come in another video. So we'll see you in a little bit. Have a good day. Have a good night. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.